I like this one, okay? Because we've talked about a whole bunch of functions. The key to this is this. We need to identify now what type of function we're working with and then identify a couple of things. Is there a max and min? Is there a, an axis of symmetry? And what is the domain and range? Remember domain represents the X's, the range represents the Y's or the answers, okay? So let's look at this right here, okay? We know this is a quadratic, this right here, because it's X squared, okay? And it's opening downward, okay? The range, notice how the biggest answer is two and then it goes downward. So we can say the range for this is Y is gonna be less than or equal to negative two. The domain, no matter what X is, you'll get an answer no matter what, okay? Very important, all right? Um, meaning that there's a maximum because it goes up, then down also, okay? For this right here, um, notice how it's absolute value. It's a V shape. It's almost like the um, quadratic. It's just more of a V. There's also that an axis of symmetry. It splits right there when X is equal to zero. And there's a maximum, meaning that the range two and less, or negative two and less than that will give you answers, okay? Last one. This is a, uh, an exponential one, and notice how it's going to get flat at negative 2, and it's going downward because of the negative there. So that means from negative 2 to infinity will be your range, and you don't include negative 2 because you can't get negative 2 as an answer, okay? So that's important. Range talks about the answers. You can graph it and then talk about what answers are possible and obviously what answers are not possible, okay? Let's look at the next page here. Okay, which of these functions have max and min? Okay, remember maximum means highest, minimum means lowest. Okay, so we need to figure out which ones can give you which. Well, this is a linear function. It continues forever and ever left and right. There's no max or min, okay? This right here is exponential like that. This is not gonna give you a min or a maximum. And the reason why it's not gonna give you a minimum is because notice how it's gonna continue forever and ever to the left. It never shows a peak. This one does, because it's absolute value. Boop, boop. Okay, keep that in mind for sure. Exponentials don't, linear functions don't, absolute value, um, and uh, what's it called? Quadratic square roots also will give you one. Cubic will not, okay? So here we go. For this one right here, does each function have a max or a min? Notice how, boop, right there, it's x squared. This is a quadratic and it's opening upward. There is a minimum, okay? This right here is a square root of function. Boop, it does this. There is gonna be a minimum, okay? This right here is cubic and it goes both ways. Boop and boop, none. There will be none because it continues for the, forever to the left and then forever to the right, okay? So we're now to page five. Which of the functions now show acts of symmetry? Keep this in mind. When you make the quick sketch of the function, right, we're trying to see where it splits. And notice right there, boop, it's the x value of the vertex. So we can say it's x equals negative three for this one. You don't even need to graph it. Basically find the vertex, and you know it's the x value of the vertex. Boop, there you go, x equals two, because that's the x value of the vertex. There's no vertex here because it's not a cubic, sorry, it's not a quadratic, it's not an absolute value, therefore there's no axis of symmetry. So there's gonna be none. Neither will this one, okay? This one's also not gonna have an axis of symmetry because it is an exponential, boop, just like that. Neither will, in a way you can say neither will this one, okay? Let's kind of grab that one real quick. It mirrors, but it doesn't split it in half. So this one's gonna be none either. These are both none. Uh, exponentials, none, and then cubic functions, none. Let's look at the last example. End behavior, okay? Depending on the function, you can kind of describe it like this, right? This one's opening downward. As the x's get smaller, the answers get smaller too. As the x's get bigger, the answers get bigger, okay? For this one here, as the x's get smaller, the x's get bigger. As the x's get smaller, the x's get to zero because it's flat and zero for the horizontal asymptote. This one the other way around because notice how as the x's get bigger, they get bigger, and they get smaller, they get smaller. Let's get these real quick, okay? This one here, two x plus two, okay? So I'm gonna move it right here. The graph's gonna do this, okay? Um, as x becomes negative, okay, the answers are gonna get flat at zero as x's 
become positive, much bigger, we can say the answers are approaching infinity. For this one here, it's actually the same thing, but it gets, it's going to get flat at four. Okay, Boop, just like that. Okay, as the x's get smaller, the answers are going to get flat at four because of this. And as the x's, whoops, as the x's get bigger, the answers will get bigger too. Okay, this one here is a quadratic and it's opening upward. Boop. So we can say for both, as the x's get smaller, the answers will get bigger. Okay, they will get bigger. And as the x's get bigger, the answers will also get bigger to infinity because it's going upward both ways. Okay, not a hard lesson. You have to understand the descriptions behind it. Have to understand the, the descriptions behind it. So I'll have, I'll have you guys fill in the blanks for some of these. Okay, so understand this. Know the graph, know how to draw the graph, and then from there, find your inference. It's not difficult at all. So notice these four graphs. We have talked about these graphs. The other one we have that's not here, boop, linear function, y equals mx plus b. Have fun. 10-4 coming at you right now.